Hello, everyone. Welcome to Healthy at Home, where we equip families to be resilient and live well. My name is Joyce Mayberry. I am the Vice President for Family Formation at Georgia Center for Opportunity. Hello, greetings to everyone. My name is Katherine Green, and I'm the Program Manager for Family Formation at Georgia Center for Opportunity. I'm so excited to have you all tune in. Today we have a special guest with us, and her name is Diana Yedes. Diana is a licensed professional counselor uh, with Georgia Psychological Treatment Center. Um, Diana, why don't you share with us a little bit more about uh, you, who you are? Thank you, uh, Catherine. Um, I am a licensed professional counselor. I work currently at um, Georgia Psychological Treatment Center. I work with adolescents and adults, and I help people uh, with overcome issues of uh, mental disorders, trauma, transitions, uh, substance abuse, and, um, and prevention. And I also help families work through you know, some communication issues to just help them grow as a family. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And that makes me just think about why in the world would you get in this field? What makes you tick to do this type of work? So the reason I chose to be in this field was because, um, was, as you guys know, I'm, I'm Colombian, I'm Hispanic, and I saw a need for um, my population um, as far as mental health and, um, you know, psychological treatment. So being that I'm bilingual in English and Spanish, I decided to do this to help people grow, to heal, and to accomplish the best life they can or to accomplish a, a life that they believe to be worth living. Mm -hmm. Your topic, four ways to reducing vulnerability for unwanted emotions. That sounds like that that's packed full of information. <laughs> and mm -hmm. so I'm looking so forward to finding out about that. Uh, and, and the reason is because in association with Georgia Center for Opportunity, we care about this because of mm -hmm. uh, strong families. We want to see families flourish. We want to see individuals flourish. And mm -hmm. for, if they're able to ward off unwanted emotions, we want to deliver the best information possible to them so, the, so that they can do that. So why don't we get into the topic, because I'm so excited. <laughs> I want to find out about, tell me a little bit about the four ways to reducing vulnerability for unwanted emotions. What is that exactly? Okay, so um, so reducing vulnerability for unwanted emotions comes from dialectic behavioral therapy by Marsha Linehan. And the purpose of these skills is to help people who are under a lot of stress, are experiencing a lot of distress in their life, be it because of stressful things going on in our environment, or be it because, you know, I've been through some very stressful things in my life that make it difficult for me to manage my emotions. So the purpose of these specific skills is to help me do four different things. So the first thing that you want to do is accumulate um, positive experiences because that's going to help you create more dopamine which is dopamine and serotonin which are our joy and pleasure chemicals in our brain so the more that you engage in activities that you enjoy the more likely that you are to be producing those chemicals in your brain and that will automatically help you ward off some you know symptoms of depression or anxiety especially you know during these times that are a little uncertain it help you distract yourself and generate some more of those chemicals in your brain that might help you feel a little bit happier you'll you'll have more joy you'll experience more joy the second one is self care and it's more like more self care in the sense of taking care of your body to be able to take care of your mind. So the way that looks like is 
you know, making sure that if you're not feeling well physically, maybe you, you know, you have a cold, you have an illness taking care of that. Sometimes we, we don't really take care of our, our, of our illnesses, you know, the way that we're supposed to. So when you take care of that, that reduces vulnerability for, you know, stress, depression, you know, symptoms that might, you know, be unwanted for you or that might be uncomfortable. Uh, the second thing you want to do is make sure you're eating enough or you're not eating too much and that you're eating things that are good for you, you know, so it's, it's okay every now and then to indulge. And at the same time, you know, be careful just with your sugar intake, be careful with your, um, with the foods that you ingest, because it, it has been proven that what you eat affects how you feel. Mm -hmm. um, the other one is sleeping well. So the recommended amount of sleep for um, adults is between seven to nine hours per night. For um, teenagers and children is between eight and a half and 10 hours per night. So make sure that you and your, and your children are eating, you know, are sleeping enough and are, and are not sleeping too much. So, you know, finding that balance, not too much or too little, that also helps you. Um, the other one is exercising, you know, exercising at least 30 minutes every day or at least three times mm -hmm. per week. Um, of course, this is mainly for adults, abstaining from uh, substance use, uh, alcohol or drugs that affects our mood. They, they are called mood uh, altering substances for a reason. So mm -hmm. while my consuming something might help you cope with um, an unwanted emotion in that moment, it's more likely to make it worse in the long term. Mm -hmm. And lastly, I think that's all of them. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I love that's, it. <laughs> that's totally fine. When you were when you were talking, what immediately came to mind was um, there are different things that are quote unquote age appropriate. So yes. what would be a reaction? from someone who is like under the age of 13, 12, you know, in the younger years, what would be a uh, reaction that they would have that we would be able to tell that this is what's going on with them? Right, so for uh, your preteens, you know, 12, 13, 11, what that most likely is going to look like, it's not wanting to follow rules for mm -hmm. bedtime, wanting to stay up, Mm -hmm. um you know they might not be very motivated i know all the kids are doing homeschooling right now that might not be and this this could be for all the kids they might not be motivated to work on their schooling you know their um schedule has been thrown off a little bit so this can cause a lot of irritability like they might be more irritable this is true for both 12 you know 11 to 13 as well as five-year-olds mm -hmm. your your younger kids might experience a little bit more fear you know because there's something going on they don't understand now they're suddenly at home with their parents so um and also they might not be able you know like they like i said before they might not be wanting to do their homework and that might also look like a little bit more fussing or fighting mm -hmm. to go to bed mm -hmm. or to follow through with certain directions or to basically get used to their new routine, right? Because they're in a new routine. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you might yes. see more crying, more protest behavior, tantrums, mm -hmm. things like that. And sometimes when a child, you know, younger than seven or eight is very, very, is under a lot of distress, you might see some regression. So if you have a child that is no longer uh, peeing in the bed, you might start seeing that again. Mm -hmm. you know or they might want to be closer to you you know so if they were more independent they might want to be closer to you so that's how younger children usually demonstrate their stresses that they get a little you know they go they kind of go back on their development mm -hmm. so the way that you would help with that is with setting a new routine you know what I mean and right. setting new routines and setting new new things that might help them feel safe routines make children feel safe that's, wow, great. that's great thank you for saying that um one of the um, items that really stick out to me is about you gave those four ways but you also talked about sleeping 
and mm -hmm. is very important to be healthy. So what are some techniques if someone is having trouble, they're sleeping during these stressful right. times? So during these stressful times, because there's so much uncertainty and so much, so many scary things happening, to be honest and completely transparent. So another one of the ways that helps is there's one called coping ahead. So when coping ahead, um, coping ahead of a situation that might bring you anxiety looks like thinking to yourself, okay, if this thing that I'm really scared of happening were to happen, how would I cope with it? What would I do? You see what I mean? Because that gives you some type of self-sufficiency. So if you practice that and you, you can journal, you can write that down sometime during the day, I wouldn't recommend it doing it right before bed because then it'll be harder. But it, it, if you journal or you write it that down, that this is mostly, you know, for adults and maybe teenagers, that helps you get that anxiety out of the way. Okay. And it helps you sleep better. And also, you know, your usual sleep hygiene techniques, which are, you know, make sure you're not drinking coffee after 4 p.m. Make sure you're only using your bed to sleep. Don't use it for any other activities. And when you're having trouble sleeping, um, don't stay in the bed. Get up and do something that's relaxing. It can look mm. like meditation, prayer, mm. deep breathing. You know, do something that is going to wind you down again. And then once you feel sleepy and you feel relaxed, then go lay down. Mm -hmm. mm. So it's basically you want to create a habit where your bed is where you sleep oh. to, to get your mind used to it. Yes, ma'am. That's a great point because I know oftentimes um, youth uh, may bring their electronic equipment in their room. Mm -hmm. And so they're constantly having that light in front of them, mm -hmm. which um, you may could talk about a little bit. How much does that desynthesize them? Does that, what does that blue light in front of them, does that contribute to any um, stressors? Uh, the blue light contributes to not being able to sleep actually. So what it's recommended is that one hour before bed, if the person is having trouble sleeping is that you should not have any exposure to a to a screen period no tv right. no computer no cell phone so i know a lot of uh people and especially teenagers they fall asleep watching tv so sometimes that can be helpful if you're not struggling with sleep and at the same time if you are then that's not gonna help that's going to make it harder because that light it does something to our eyes so it's just harder to to fall asleep it just keeps you awake longer, like keeps your brain working longer. Mm -hmm. We've been in this stressful time, and I know we're in like a crisis uh, moment. Uh, what have you seen recently being heightened as a result of uh, us being in this crisis from families? Uh, I've seen a lot of people worried about their health, their loved ones, you know. Um, you know, as, as the virus continues, we, we've seen the numbers grow. So, you know, people are worrying about their loved ones, people that work um, in, it, you know, in businesses that were closed for a while. They, you know, I've seen a lot of stress regarding financial security and, you know, feeling secure, feeling safe. Having a job is part of you feeling safe because mm -hmm. you'll be able to provide for yourself and your family. So, of course, that's going to cause a lot of anxiety for people mm -hmm. and um loneliness uh there's been a lot of loneliness because um you know the the term social distancing um talks about you know like it, it, we don't like it as much in, in in counseling we're calling it physical distancing because you can still mm -hmm. be connected with people without mm -hmm. um being um, physically with them, right? And at the same time, some people struggle with that. They, you know, they really miss that touch, the hugging, all that stuff. So that's how I've noticed that it's been affecting some, some people. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. Wow. So does that, that, oh, just did oh, you go have ahead. a no, question? Go ahead. No, go I was ahead. gonna say, so those four ways um, to reduce that vulnerability, um, how does that, does that marry really well with um, when you're, feeling such anxiety or uncertainty. Um, I see you, the first one was like self-care. That's part of that. I can see right. what else. 
so so the way that uh, most of this would would fit in uh, with what's actually going on right now is you know doing the um, the activities that you enjoy I know we're not, you know, right now we're not going to restaurants, we're not gathering. And at the same time, you can still, you know, um, I know Zoom is allowing people to do gatherings for free. You can gather on Zoom and, you know, do a game night or do, you know, calls with your family at home with the children. It's very important that you participate with them, especially the little ones. If you see them playing, try to participate in their play. Mm -hmm. Or if you're tired, because you know, sometimes we're tired, <laughs> you can just narrate their game so they feel like you're part of it. Mm -hmm. And that helps them feel important and connected. With your teenager, you might want to talk more about feelings because they do have that capability to talk about their feelings mm -hmm. and, you know, validate their emotions, validate how they might be feeling, you know, especially seniors, you know, they've had a lot of grief. They've had a lot of loss right now. You know, they lost their last seasons, their graduation prom. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just validate that grief, validate all of that. And um, that's going to help you build that resilience and cope with what's currently going on. And the self-care is to help you one stay healthy physically and that when you're healthy physically, it, it makes it a little bit easier for you to cope with what might come, that anxiety, that stress. So that's, that's what that might help you with. And then the coping ahead helps with helping you feel empowered to cope with what might come. So, um, so, so that's how you that's how you fit them in, and this is something that can be done, you know, in as a as a family, and you know, like maybe learning new skills and be, you know, building mastery in new things. So uh, maybe teaching your kids a new skill or something that you have always wanted them to learn. This is a yeah. good time, you know, to take advantage of of this this time that we're all having in inside the house together, just getting creative and and doing things to build those positive emotions between us mm -hmm. to help us come with the everyday stresses that can come from the news work you know all this stuff yeah absolutely Diana, you know, that was that was some great information. You also gave us some good ways to counteract, mm -hmm. which was great because we always like to, you know, uh, leave hope <laughs> for our audiences. Mm -hmm. Is there any things that you listed that you would recommend over the other? So things maybe that you see work better? Coping ahead is very useful, especially with anxiety, because it helps you have a plan just in case and that helps a lot um, especially with coping with anxiety number one and number two for loneliness connecting it's important where we're social beings by nature so so you know like checking checking with everybody especially if you have um older family members mm -hmm. you know grandparents mm -hmm. that they might be very lonely because for their safety they have you know they might have to be alone you might not be able to go visit them Make sure you're calling them, make sure you're checking in on them, you know, make sure you can, you know, do something together while you're talking on the phone, engage in activities together. So remember that, you know, as you're not social distancing, we're physically distancing, you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, thank you so much uh, for your time. I appreciate that. Well, one last question from me, and then Joyce may have uh, another to wrap it up. But I wanted to know, uh, I consider you on the front lines for us. <laughs> I really do, because people are uh, now seeking out ways that they can, they can actually cope and get through uh, everyday crisis or stressors that are in our life. Uh, what do you do as a therapist? to reduce <laughs> vulnerability of, I'm sure you get some unwanted emotions that you have. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> so what I do personally is that I've made um, a, a schedule, a routine for myself. I try to make sure that I get in exercise every day that, that helps me relax. Um, at night, if I'm having trouble sleeping, something that has been uh, proven also to help when you're dealing with a lot of anxiety is tapping. So, uh, you know, like I'll be laying down and I'll be tapping myself. 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, just breathing through that emotion and, you know, try to cope ahead. Think, think of a plush, you know, like a pleasant place, like a safe, you know, a place where I've felt good, where I've had, you know, so um, I like uh, riding bicycles. So I imagine myself riding a bicycle mm-hmm. and that usually helps me, you know, wind down a little bit. Um, and, you know, just make sure I stay um, engaged and keep a schedule so I don't feel overwhelmed you like know um, floating out there huh like you exactly just float. <laughs> exactly i i uh keep up with the news but i don't look at the news all day so that's another mm-hmm. thing don't don't be if if this is something that brings you a lot of anxiety it's not helpful to be looking at the news every second i just mm-hmm. look at them i just designate a time you know like 10 minutes and that's it and then i move on you know so i stay informed because it's important to stay informed and at the same time, I don't overdo it. So, you know, being very mindful, very intentional about having balance. So that's that's what I do. And it's been very helpful. I stay connected with my friends and family. You know, I talk to them every day, you know, to somebody every day. So oh, great. that's how I, I help myself. I, you know, just watching different videos and um, conferences every you know like there's different webinars going on about Mm self-care and stuff like that so i i participate on those as as well i i watch that and it it's helpful you always find new things that's great well will you just give us those four ways um again um so that we are viewers can get that thank you yes yes so um just to summarize the four ways is one engaging um enjoyable activities so you know spending time with your family connecting with others do things that you really enjoy second one is taking care of your body to take care of your mind uh so it's those self-care things that we talked about sleeping eating exercise um coping ahead imagine yourself coping with the stressful situation before it happens to give you a sense of self-sufficiency and lastly building mastery so learning something new or teaching your kids something new too because when you when you learn a new skill and you master it, you feel good about yourself and you feel good and you feel prepared and you feel ready. So, so those are the four ways to help you reduce vulnerability for unwanted emotions. Thank you so much, Joyce. You're welcome. Thank you. Do you wanna leave us just one or two words of hope and inspiration for our viewers? Yes. Um, I think we are going to make it through this. It is very difficult times. And at the same time, just remember of other times that you've been able to cope with a difficult situation. And as a family and as a, as a, as a race of human beings, I think we're going to be able to pull through this one. So, you know, every day be, be grateful for the good things that come to you every day. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know count three blessings every day and that's going to help you little by little day by day cope with with what's going on until we we get through the other side thank you so much for that diana you guys thank heard you. it here you heard diana say it have gratitude be thankful mm-hmm. uh, we just love your message today and we thank you again so much for it thank you for tuning in to this week's Healthy at Home. If you want to learn more about Georgia Center for Opportunity, visit us on the web at georgiaopportunity.org or you can uh, visit us on social media across all platforms. Thank you again and we look forward to seeing you next week at Healthy at Home.